David Lyons contributed this entire section. He's a ham operator. Sometime he uh, hems it up. That's what I was going to say. Uh, he is federally licensed to ham it up. Oh, okay, oh, okay. Ham Radio, Evidence for a Spherical Earth, researched by technical writer David Lyons, and he writes for major uh, technical companies. Many people who believe that the Earth is flat simply dismiss any evidence from space flight, believing it to be a fake. There is, however, one way to test whether the Earth is flat or spherical by using amateur ham radio as high frequency HF, 1.8 megahertz to 30 megahertz, radio waves travel out and up from the transmitter. They tend to be refracted or reflected back downward to the Earth's surface multiple times and can thus be heard around the world. Let's see if the schematic, there, there we are. Here's the transmitter and they're reflected and reflected back multiple times and that can thus be heard around the world. This might not be convincing except that the stations at moderate distances from the horizon, these right here, fall beyond the horizon fall of the skip zone and do not hear the signal. They don't hear the signal. That is incredibly important. This could be a problem during emergencies. To overcome this effect, special antennas can, can be set up to shoot the HF signal nearly straight up so it bounces straight back providing reliable communications to points a few hundred miles away beyond the radio horizon but inside the skip zone. This is useful for emergencies such as earthquakes or severe weather where the normal communication infrastructure is destroyed. Watch. A flat earth would have no pronounced skip zone like hams have to work around. If the earth were flat, long-range low-power communications would be possible at very high frequencies coast to coast. Here you have the transmitter. If it's flat, you just go right on across from one side of the disk to the other. No problem. It's the sphericity that creates the problem. Very high frequency radio waves, 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz, penetrates the ionosphere. They're slightly bent as they travel over the terrain, but eventually just shoot out into space. How do we do this? One tip-off is that very large antennas with high, very high expensive amplifiers cannot send a signal more than about 300 miles. Wow! Modest equipment can make contact several hundred miles away from mountaintops, allowing the signal to travel farther before it is shadowed back to the ground. Another clue is that one can aim a good antenna at the moon and bounce the signal off its surface to be received anywhere on Earth where the moon is visible, even at vast distances. This is called Earth, Moon, Earth Communications, EME, or moon bounce. Again, if the Earth is flat, moon bounce would not work better than pointing any antenna at the continent you want to talk to. So this confirms the sphericity. VFH frequencies are very useful for surface communication, but are limited by the curvature of the Earth. VHF can bend around the Earth slightly and certain weather phenomena can create occasional long-distance ducting. However, tall antennas and very high power are required to reach over 100 miles. The International Space Station is always 260 miles away, yet can be contacted using a 5 watt power from a quality walkie-talkie portable receiver. So all of this confirms there's curvature to the Earth. VHF walkie-talkies are familiar. Police radios are essentially the same thing, only slightly different frequencies. These can communicate over a few miles or 20 to 30 miles to a station with a tall tower. But this same small radio can talk to astronauts in the international space 260 miles away. If the Earth were flat, we could expect the same range on Earth. Cell phones would work flawlessly, except for the growing number of software bugs 